What's good everybody, this is Robo from All Bark back with another video and today I'm bringing you my college football week 12 picks. Last week I finished just over 500 again at 32, 31, and 1 against the spread. A solid week on the winners though, picking several upsets in the week and going 45 and 19 overall that way. Had a couple games going in the opposite direction but that's college football for you. But we did learn a lot about how dominant Georgia still is as well as Michigan figuring out that run game again and just dominating Penn State defensively. We've got a pretty solid group of eight playoff contenders right now heading into the last two weeks of the regular season. So with that said, let's go ahead and take a look at week 12, of course, starting with the week nights. Toledo heads to Bowling Green Tuesday, still undefeated in conference play, looking to continue that dominance. And like I've said, Daquan Finn is a stud at quarterback for Toledo and just makes plays when Toledo needs them. Bowling Green has played solid defense, but this will be their toughest test since Georgia Tech. I think Toledo will have enough to get the road win here, though, 31-23. Northern Illinois welcomes Western Michigan to town this week with both teams sitting with their backs against the wall at 4-6 and six, looking to get bowl eligible. I like Northern Illinois' chances in this one, however, with how much better they defend than Western. If they can get an early lead, the defense should be able to hold strong and get NIU the win at home. I've got a 30-21 final score. Eastern Michigan takes on Akron Tuesday night in the same boat as NIU and Western at 4-6 and six, looking to get one step closer to bowl eligibility. I don't like either team in this matchup at all, but at least the Eagles have something to play for here and are at home on their gray turf. I'm taking the Eagles to win this one, 24-17. Central Michigan at Ohio kicks off Wednesday with Central a game away from bowl eligibility as well. Ohio has been really struggling offensively lately, but this is a good chance for them to put a good performance together as Central has given up over 30 points a game on the year. I like Ohio in this one with a 30-17 final. Miami, Ohio takes on Buffalo Wednesday night. Not only has Buffalo been dreadful this season, but the Red Hawks can clinch a MAC East title this week with a win here. That's more than enough motivation to come out hungry and secure a spot in the MAC title game. I've got Miami taking this one 28-14. Just one game Thursday night, but it could be a good one as Pitt is back at home taking on Thomas Castellanos in Boston College. Boston College just got absolutely obliterated last week at home by Virginia Tech. Kyron Jones just dominated the Boston College defense. Pitt is looking to snap their second four-game losing streak of the season here, and I think they'll be able to get it done again. I've got Pitt by a field goal 27-24. UTSA has been on an absolute roll offensively since Frank Harris came back six weeks ago, and they're taking on South Florida at home this week, who just cannot defend at all. This is not the best spot for USF in my opinion, and as long as UTSA plays clean football, they should dominate this game. They haven't been sharp defensively, but I think they score a ton of points in this one. I've got a 45-24 final score. Colorado has dropped four straight and now looks unlikely to reach a bowl game, but Washington State is in the same boat dropping six straight after an impressive 4-0 start. This is a must-win game for both teams with two playmaking quarterbacks that just need a lot of help right now. But honestly, despite the results, I think Colorado is just playing better football and seems a bit more motivated than whatever's going on at Washington State right now. Even on the road, I'd rather take the Buffs as a dog here, 31-28. On to Saturday with Michigan heading out to Maryland. As I mentioned, this Michigan team has earned their respect, making a statement against Penn State, running the ball every single play for over an entire half of football, and coming over with a victory that was a bit better than the score has shown. A win this week over Maryland will be their 1,000th win in program history, so a lot of motivation to avoid the pre-Ohio State look-ahead trap. I think Michigan wins big again this week, 38-14, setting up an undefeated showdown in Ann Arbor next week. Louisville cracked the top 10 by default after a less impressive win over Virginia last week. They'll take on Miami, who fought to the last drive on the road at Florida State last week, but that might have taken a lot out of them mentally, and I think this late in the season, scares are going to happen and can help wake a team up. Louisville will be in for a tough game, but I trust them to bounce back and win this one on the road, 27-21. Penn State takes on Rutgers this week, looking to turn a new page now that they fired offensive coordinator Mike Yurcich after last week's mess. And they'll host Rutgers that couldn't score a point at Iowa and barely got over 100 total yards in the day. Now up against Penn State's defense, it'll be another struggle. I think Penn State comes out strong here and takes this one 34-10 in a statement win. It's non-conference week for a majority of the SEC. Some games are left out as there's no spread available, but Ole Miss and Louisiana Monroe have one as is an FBS opponent. Ole Miss will obviously dominate this game and get the backup some reps later on. I've got a final score of 45-10 for the Rebels. Oklahoma got back in a big way last week, demolishing West Virginia's defense, and now will head out to BYU, who's just taking beatings left and right right now. I think Oklahoma is just out for blood right now, trying to finish the season strong, and BYU is not a team I'd want to back, even at home as we saw last week. Give me the Sooners, 42-17. Tulane survived a scare last week against a bad Tulsa team and hits the road at FAU this week. At 9-1 now, it's easy to get overconfident, and I think last week may have woke the team back up a bit. This could be a tough spot against a solid FAU offense, but I trust this Tulane team enough to handle business on the road, as they've done all year beating better teams than this. I've got a 34-21 final. Coastal Carolina took down a solid Texas State team last week behind another solid outing from Ethan Vasco. And to keep it real, this Army team has been god-awful outside of the Air Force upset, dropping games to UMass and getting taken to the wire by Holy Cross. 
This shouldn't be a game Coastal loses. Give me the chance, 24 to 17. Michigan State at Indiana is just an ugly football game between two teams who just can't win games right now. Brendan Soresby has been decent for the Hoosiers, but after a heartbreaker like last week, this is a tough spot to be in. I think they'll be able to pull out a victory against a Spartan team not playing for anything, but four and a half points is a lot to lay in a game that probably goes down to the wire. Give me the Hoosiers though, 23 to 20. Mississippi State just got flat out embarrassed last week at Texas A&M and just fired Arnett as well. Typically a spread like this looks crazy, but a lot like the Jacksonville State South Carolina game, this is a team who can run the football coming in to play a bad defense who may not take it serious. I want no part of this group right now, so give me Frank Gore Jr. to have a big game on the ground and keep it competitive, 34 to 21 Mississippi State. Purdue at Northwestern is a tough game to predict as it's just completely unpredictable on that side of the conference right now, but at least I can say Northwestern's really impressed me with how much better they've looked than I expected. I don't know if I can say they're truly a better team than Purdue, but with a 5-5 and record, they've got something to play for, especially if they try to prove the interim tag should be removed from David Braun's job title. This is a big chance to get that done, and I'm going to take the wild catch to win this one 27-24. East Carolina has looked so much better in recent weeks as they picked up their second win of the season at FAU last week. Navy is not a super easy opponent, though, as they just dominated UAB last week, but with how ECU has battled against UTSA, Tulane, and FAU... I find it hard to not back them in this spot, even against a decent Navy team who's coming off a performance like that at home. I may regret this, but I'm going with ECU here, 21-17. SMU and Memphis face off this week, which should be a fun watch with two high-power offenses and a really bad Memphis defense. SMU has just been scoring at will for a while now, and they won't slow down this week. Memphis has given up points to some bad offense this season, and SMU is the exact opposite of that. I like the Mustangs to cover this one, 41-31. Liberty is 10-0 and climbing into the top 25 looking to complete the undefeated season and come into this matchup with UMass as huge favorites and rightfully so. UMass is off a bye week, but Liberty has dominated some much better opponents at home behind Caden Salter in that offense. So I've got them doing so again, 45-14 this week. James Madison still sits undefeated after last week's domination against UConn, but this will be a tougher test up against a solid App State squad. However, as I've mentioned in the past, this JMU defense is one of the country's best, and at home there is not much reason to not like the Dukes in this matchup. I do think App State is able to put some points up, but I like JMU to get win number 11 here, 34-20. Jacksonville State is back off a bye after showing they can compete with South Carolina a few weeks ago. Meanwhile, their opponent this week lost to Sam Houston State, giving them their first FBS win of the year. Louisiana Tech has been a disaster all season long, basically, and I don't expect much different this week with a fairly healthy JSU squad. Give me the Gamecocks in this one, 31-21. Middle Tennessee handled business with ease last week against FIU, and they're right back at home again getting a similar opponent in UTEP. This one should probably be a bit closer than last week, but as I've mentioned before, there's not much good to say about UTEP this season besides being rested off a bye. I think Middle Tennessee is just the better team here and should be able to have a similar success. I'm going to go with a 31-20 final. Rice missed JT Daniels last week as they got hammered by UTSA, but he's currently questionable and trending towards playing this week at Charlotte. Charlotte does have a decent defense at times, but as long as Daniels plays, I think Rice should be able to win this football game. Even on the road, I'm going to take Rice 28-23. Kent State at Ball State is the only non-weeknight mat game of the week, which means less eyes in this football game, but it has a chance to be a decent one. Ball State's been playing much better football as of late, but sitting at 3-7, and seven, still double digits is pretty scary to be favored by in this situation. Kent State's just looking to get in the win column for the first time in MAG play, and they may come with a strong fight, but I think they'll fall short. I've got Ball State 24-14. We've got Hawaii at Wyoming Saturday, which isn't the greatest matchup as Wyoming enters this one as simply the better team, but that doesn't often matter in rivalry games when neither teams have looked stellar, and there's bragging rights and a trophy on the line. I'd expect Hawaii's offense to show up in this game and battle through. Wyoming should be able to rely on the run game as well, though, and pick up the win, 31-21. Utah at Arizona has game of the week potential with just a one point spread favoring Arizona at home here. Arizona has been incredibly good in this spot and Utah is coming off a tough loss to Washington where they look pretty good. This will be one of the toughest defenses Arizona has seen but I've learned to trust them at home and I've got them taking a thriller 28-24. West Virginia will look to rebound after last week's rough outing against Oklahoma as they've got Cincinnati at home. Emory Jones hasn't been awful but this Cincinnati team hasn't gotten anything going besides Corey Kiner and on the road for a second straight week. They're not a team I want to trust to replicate last week's performance. I like Garrett Green and West Virginia here, 34-23. Duke and Virginia are both coming off tough losses last week with Duke dropping a heartbreaker in double overtime and Virginia choking a fourth quarter lead at Louisville. I worry about the spot for Duke on the road after a game like that at UNC and Virginia has played some much better football as of late like we saw last week. Duke has been the better team this season but I think Virginia might be able to get it done against a low morale Blue Devil group. I've got a 27-24 final for the Cavs. North Texas at Tulsa this week will once again make a run for the highest scoring game of the week as most North Texas games are. Easily one of the worst defenses in the country on the North Texas side and Tulsa has been absolutely crushed on occasion this year. 
but I like the way they battled up against Tulane last week. At home, I wouldn't be surprised to see them pull off a slight upset here against a really bad defense. Give me Tulsa 38-35. Temple is playing much better football with EJ Warner back at the helm and somehow was able to keep that game tight last week in cover. I don't think UAB is too tough an opponent for them to replicate that type of performance with a spread over a touchdown. I'd expect UAB to come out on top at home, but I think Temple's got a shot on this one. I've got the Blazers though, 34-28. Texas State at Arkansas State is an interesting one in the Sun Belt as Arkansas State is seeking bowl eligibility with a win here at home. Both teams are out of the Sun Belt race, so I'd like to think Arkansas State will be the more motivated side here. Texas State is a solid football team, but I'm picking up another upset in this one with Arkansas State at home, 31-28. Colorado State hosts Nevada this week with their backs against the wall at 4-6. They've got two winnable games in front of them, and it starts this week. They should be motivated to pick up a win here and keep their hopes alive against an inferior opponent who's just looking to play spoiler. 11.5 is a lot of points for a team who struggled this year, but Colorado State has fought tough against some solid teams like UNLV and Wyoming, and I think this is a week where they take control early and get a win, 30-17. Georgia is back to being my number one team in the country after last week's domination of Ole Miss. Just as dominant of a performance you can get out of the Bulldogs, and they're looking unstoppable right now. Taking on Tennessee and Nalen is always a tough task, but with how impressive the Georgia team looks on both sides of the ball, I would not be surprised to see them have a lot of success yet again here. Carson Beck is starting to gain some Heisman buzz after another win. He can increase that a bit more. I'm going to go with Georgia on the road, 34-20. Notre Dame is back off the bye looking to get back in the win column after a lackluster performance in the loss at Clemson a couple weeks ago. This team should be hungry and rested as they take on a really weak Wake Forest team who didn't even show up at all last week at home against NC State. 24 is a lot of points, but I think Notre Dame has a good shot to get there. Give me the Irish 38-13 this week. North Carolina at Clemson has regained a bit of steam in recent weeks as Clemson's finally gotten back to playing good football and UNC survived a huge rivalry game against Duke last week. This would be a big chance for Drake May to solidify his draft stock towards the top of the 2024 board. But with the way Clemson's playing right now, I think they're going to win this game. I don't love 7 points though as I think USC has enough offensive talent to push Clemson late in this game. But I like the Tigers 31-28. Iowa will take on Illinois this week after arguably their best performance of the season, shutting out Rutgers and finally putting up some points on the board on offense, showing some life against a decent defense. Illinois survived a big overtime scare by Indiana, but this one is not a great spot for them. As we know, Iowa's defense has been dominant and could completely shut down Illinois again this week. As long as Iowa can sustain a bit of the success they had, i like them to come out on top in another low-scoring battle, 20-10. Sam Houston State got victory number two on the year and their first FBS-level win over Louisiana Tech last week on the road. This week, they're back at Western Kentucky taking on a much stronger offensive attack that hasn't looked the way they should. But it's senior day for Austin Reed and the Hilltoppers in what could be his and Malachi Corley's final home game. I'd expect a duo to come play in a big way this week and handle business with a 34-17 win. UCLA and USC is often a close and high scoring rivalry matchup and this year may be no different as it's Caleb Williams final regular season game in a USC uniform. He's going up against a stellar UCLA pass rush so I do think it's a little bit lower scoring than usual because of the offensive issues UCLA has as well as the impact their defense brings. But I've got USC coming out with a victory here for Caleb 34-31. NC State at Virginia Tech has the chance to be a great game as NC State's proven to be a solid team picking up some great wins against Clemson, Miami, and a blowout to Wake Forest. And now they're back on the road against Virginia Tech, who has found a playmaker in Kyron Drones at quarterback. This could be a really fun game to watch on Saturday on Senior Day for the Hokies. I like Kyron Drones to keep pushing the offense forward and picking up a big win here at home, 24-21. TCU gets Baylor at home this week, staring at a 4-6 record on the year. Typically, this would be a spot where a team comes out fired up, but with Oklahoma on the road next week, I don't know how bought in the Bull hopes will be for this team. They are no doubt a better team than Baylor this year and should be able to win this game at home, but two touchdowns is a lot to ask after a tough loss to Texas last week, and I don't trust them to be able to defend enough to cover that. I've got them winning though, 35-24. Troy continues to dominate the Sun Belt, sitting on a 5-1 record in conference and 8-2 overall behind an incredible defense. This week, they'll get a Louisiana team fighting for a bowl eligibility with a decent offensive attack. It'll be tough to score on this Troy team on the road, but I think they can play an inspired enough game to keep it within striking distance. Give me Troy taking this one though, 31-17. UNLV heads out to Air Force this week for another great battle. Air Force has really fallen off a cliff in recent weeks though, dropping back-to-back -back games in pretty ugly fashion. And UNLV continues to surge, especially offensively. Just dominating Wyoming last week behind Maeva at quarterback. I've got to keep rolling with this UNLV team as Air Force has seemed to hit a wall, and this isn't the best spot for them at all either. I've got a 27-21 win for the Rebels. Ohio State may hold on to that number one ranking in the college football playoff rankings tonight after a blowout win at home against Michigan State last week. Marvin Harrison Jr. continues to make his case for Heisman as we're seeing a bit better play out of Kyle McCord in recent weeks. With the way they can defend, Minnesota's going to have a tough time moving the football on the road here. I've got the Buckeyes picking up a similar win to last week, 38-7. Oregon looks to continue dominating as they head down to Arizona State this week with Bo Nix looking to add to that Heisman resume. 
Arizona State's put up some fights this season, but Oregon should be able to have their way with them here, especially after having a bit of a scare from USC last week. I've got the Ducks handling business in a big way, 41-14. to Oklahoma State just took a beating last week at UCF and needs to bounce back in a big way against a really poor Houston squad who hasn't had much success on the year. I'd be surprised to see the Cowboys come out as poorly as they did last week again, although they're on the road again, but I can't side with this Houston team against a much better opponent. Give me Oklahoma State 34-24. Another SEC cupcake matchup as Auburn will take on New Mexico State this week. Auburn has really come on strong offensively lately, but a matchup like this may be a bit tougher than they expect. New Mexico State has been really solid this season on both sides of the ball, and Auburn enters this one as huge favorites over three touchdowns. I'm not sure I'm a fan of that as Auburn may not take this game seriously, and New Mexico State is capable of hanging around for a bit. I've got a 38-17 final score. UCF heads out to Texas Tech this week after last week's dominance over Oklahoma State and Texas Tech's upset win at Kansas. Both teams are in letdown spot, so it's really about who you trust more, and as long as Baron Morton plays for the Raiders, I like Texas Tech to come away with a win in this game. He brings a different dynamic to the offense, which can give UCF some challenges on the road. I've got Texas Tech here, 31-28. Marshall and South Alabama both sit at 5-5 five five on the year after Marshall finally found some offense last week against Georgia Southern. However, this is still not a team I trust whatsoever after a five-game losing streak, and they're back on the road against a bit of an underrated South Alabama squad. I think the Jaguars are both a better team and a bit more desperate for the win here as they've got a tougher matchup on the road next week. Give me the Jags to cover the 10, 30-17. Old Dominion enters the matchup at Georgia Southern with their backs against the wall at well at 4-6, and six, needing to win out for ball eligibility, and this is a really tough spot for them as Davis Brand has been solid this year and Georgia Southern's coming off back-to-back -back road losses. They should be able to get back in the win column here, although Old Dominion won't go down without a fight. I just think they don't have enough to finish the job and live another week. I'm taking Georgia Southern 35-24. Cal and Stanford face off this week under the lights in what could be a pretty high scoring game as the Stanford defense only shows up on occasion and Cal is a high powered offense with a low power defense. However, they have proven to be the better team in this matchup by a decent margin and I expect them to come out on top here again as Stanford season's over after their seventh loss last week. Give me Cal 34-24. Kansas State at Kansas is a huge game Saturday night after Kansas suffered a disappointing loss last week against Texas Tech after losing Jason Bean to an injury. Coach Leopold says he's optimistic Jason Bean will be able to play in his senior night though. And with that being a big rivalry game, 8 is too many points for the Wildcats in my opinion if Bean suits up. I like the Jayhawks to battle throughout this game all the way to the end, but I think the Cats come away with victorious 30-28. Boise State and Utah State both sit at 5-5 five five looking to pick up win number 6, but the Broncos just fired their head coach while only a game out of Mountain West, which shakes up a lot of things. I think Boise is a more talented team here, but I question where they are mentally with a new coach for this game. And on the road under the lights, this will be a real tough test for them. Utah State is often in high-scoring battles, and I think they may be able to pull off the upset here. I've got a 34-31 final for the Utah State. Washington at Oregon State is no doubt the most anticipated game of this week, especially out west as this has a lot of playoff implications on the Washington side. Oregon State is a slight home favorite in this one despite a long winning streak for the Huskies. This should be an incredible game between two great teams. I think Michael Penix can make a Heisman statement with a road win here, and they've just found a way over and over again to come out on top no matter the situation. They've got some defensive issues, but because of Penix and Odunze, I just can't side against Washington, who controls their own destiny, even in a matchup as tough as this. I've got the Huskies in a tight one, 35-31. Missouri will host Florida Saturday night after a dominating performance against Tennessee. Florida was able to hang with LSU for a while last week, but fell short and now heads into another tough spot. Florida has Florida State next week, so this is almost a must-win game for their bowl hopes, but even with that motivation, I don't trust them on the road again against a really good Missouri team who continues to impress me. I like the Tigers again here at 34-21. Arkansas takes on FIU Saturday night after an absolute beatdown last week against Auburn, dashing any bowl hopes remaining as they picked up loss number 7. Arkansas is going to win this game, but I question how hard they really play with nothing else to play for besides pride. It's not a game you really get up for, and I don't think a night game will help much. I think FIU covers a huge spread here, 38-10 Arkansas. Kentucky heads to South Carolina for an ugly SEC matchup. Both teams have really disappointed, and South Carolina has their backs against the wall now at 4-6. At home under the lights and with Clemson next, I wouldn't be surprised to see Spencer Rattler come up with a big win and to add some more motivation to next week's rivalry matchup. Especially with Devin Leary banged up for Kentucky, give me the Gamecocks to sneak out with a close win, 28-27 at home. Nebraska at Wisconsin is almost as ugly as it can get this week with both teams' injury reports absolutely loaded and a Nebraska quarterback situation up in the air. You really don't want to side with either team in this situation, but with how poorly Wisconsin looked in Mordecai's return as well as how lengthy that injury report is, I think six may be too many points in a low-scoring battle. I've got Wisconsin winning a close one at home, 17-14. Texas got Quinn Ewers back and was rolling at TCU before yet another late game choke that could have potentially cost them the game. That's becoming a trend with this Texas team and Iowa State is on a roll offensively. This should be a solid atmosphere in Iowa and will be a tough game for Texas, but I'm going to trust the talent gap, especially on the defensive side here to help lead Texas to a victory here. Give me the Longhorns by 10, 30-20.
Georgia State heads to LSU to take on arguably the best quarterback in the country in Jaden Daniels, who just put on a historic show last week with over 600 yards in the day. LSU should be able to score at will in this game, but I could see Georgia State putting some points on the board as well, especially later on against some backups. I've got LSU big, but not enough to cover, 49-21. Syracuse finally got back in the win column last week against Pitt, but hits the road again at Georgia Tech, who really just needs to take better care of the football in order to win this game. I think they're the better team for sure, but they'll need a Haynes King to play some solid football this week. I think it happens, though, as Syracuse doesn't have much on defense. I like the Yellow Jackets here, 30-21. to Fresno State took a beating last week at San Jose State in embarrassing fashion and lost Mikey Keene to concussion symptoms in that game as well. If he isn't able to go, Fresno should still win this game against a bad New Mexico team, but I don't know how if they'll be able to cover the spread as big as it is. I'm going to go with a 38-17 final score for the Bulldogs. San Jose State will welcome San Diego State to town this week in an absolute must-win game. A 5-5 record on the year after a massive blowout win against Fresno State last week and a very tough road game at UNLV coming up next week. I'd expect San Jose State to go all in on this game and do everything they can to not put their bull hopes on the line on the road in the finale. And I just think the offense is hot right now and should stay hot here. 34-17 San Jose State. That's it for my Week 12 picks. As always, let me know in the comments which games you're most excited to see as well as your favorite picks of the week. Thanks for watching as always and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.